Shannon Martin had it made, a dream home, a loving husband, and three adorable kids, but after a series of unexpected life events and a persistent nudging from God, the Martins traded their picture-perfect life for something radically different. Shannon joins us to tell us what that was. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to the Harvest Show. Thanks for having me. Okay, so this picture formed in my mind, you know, a handsome husband, three cute right. kids, <laughs> a farmhouse. I mean, you're not yeah. too far from us here at the studio. No, not at all. Very so close. describe that life for us. Yeah, you know, a lot of what you just said. I had a husband that I loved and three precious kids who came to us through adoption. So that was a surprise for us along the road. You know, God, God surprised us there. But we, our family was growing and thriving. We had bought our dream farmhouse on six acres. We were living the life we had always wanted. Mm -hmm. And so what happened that you don't go from that to what? Uh, I mean, you you downsized, but it wasn't you who really wanted to downsize. What is the, the Lord nudging you saying, I have Absolutely. a plan for your life? Yes, I would have never chosen this path for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, we like I said, we were living the life that we had dreamed of. And the Lord started speaking to us very loudly that his plan was actually pretty different for us than the plan we had made for ourselves. Mm. And so we were on the path to surrender then. You know, what are we willing to let go of? so that we can be a part of the work that God's doing around us and love our neighbor more, um, love and understand the poor and the overlooked more. And it required a lot of laying things down. So we ended up selling our dream farm home and moving to- And a, the six acres? And the six acres. <laughs> okay. And the orchard and all of that. And we moved to a forgotten little neighborhood on what is seen as kind of the wrong side of the tracks in a close by city. Wow. And what was that nudging like? I mean, how did that idea or that vision kind of shape uh, itself in your heart yeah. and in your husband's heart. Yeah, it was a long process. And I, I always say God didn't unfurl the blueprints across the table for us. It began okay. as just quiet steps in the beginning. You know, we began taking a harder look at the Gospels and at the way Jesus lived when he was on earth and the things that he required for his followers to love God with all of our heart and to love our neighbor just as much as we loved us. And we really love ourselves. <laughs> so we began to, to sort of weigh that, you know, we love ourselves an awful lot. We were living a life where everybody around us looked like us, lived like us, believed like us. Mm -hmm. We didn't really know the poor. We didn't know um, people who wore their brokenness in really visible ways. And he, he kept nudging us along. He showed us never more than just the next step. Mm -hmm. So one of the first big steps was, I'm going to ask you guys to sell this farm, and are you willing to do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now, hard. is your husband, I know that your husband is a jail chaplain. When all of this was going on, was he a chaplain at the no, time? No, at the time, my husband and I both worked in federal politics. So my husband Whoa. worked for kidding. a United States congressman, Wow! and I we had lived in D.C. for a time, and we're back in the district. So we both had political jobs, making great money, very secure, just kind of building that American dream and believing that our job was to make our life as secure and safe and peaceful and comfortable as possible. And God just kind of shook us up like a can of nuts mm -hmm. and got our attention that, you know, his way was going to actually be different and his more for my, for my family was going to look like less. less. Huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so now describe, take us from like you started adopting the children or you already had we the children? Are, we already had our, our first two mm -hmm. and we were in the process of bringing our third little guy home from South Korea. And so he came into our home in the midst of all of this swirl of, you know, we were still living on the farm, but we had a feeling that God was calling us to something very surprising. We brought our third child home. We ended up selling the farm, moved and ended up adopting our fourth son who was incarcerated in jail at the time. And so your husband met him while he was the chaplain, uh, you know, he during his He was not duties? at the jail yet. Okay. So our, you know, we got to know this young man and that was our first visit to the jail. So my husband, Corey and I had never been to the jail before. Now we're visiting who is now our son. And then a year or two later, Corey shifted gears and became the full-time chaplain of that same jail. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you, um, what was it like when you made the transition? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you downsized and you moved into a small little home mm -hmm. or apartment on the other side of the town or the tracks, as yeah. you said. What was that like from a culture shift perspective? 
you know, it was, it was different in every way. And we were honestly pretty nervous mm -hmm. making that move. So a lot of the people around us, our families, our friends, people who really loved us were expressing grave concern for us and were suggesting that perhaps we were hearing God wrong. You know, there's this idea yeah. that God never calls us down off the ladder. Um, this American middle-class idea that every move we make needs to be a step up. And so we were kind of just really falling off of the ladder. We were taking jobs with less clout and our income had been slashed to its knees. I mean, we were just, we had lost money. We were now losing our farm. Our newest son was really grieving from his adoption. Everything, every step of the way, things got a little harder. And mm -hmm. so it was, it was confusing to the people around us. Mm -hmm and became a little confusing to us in the process. You know, I think that's a really good point that you make that God never calls us to downsize. That's the right. feeling. Who are we looking at right here? On oh, the screen. Kids, yeah. kids with attitude, <laughs> but I see. Those are my sweet little kids that I'm so blessed. You know, yeah. I pictured what my kids would look like someday and I, mm -hmm. I never knew to picture that. I didn't know to yeah. ask for that. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a wonderful surprise. Okay, so the name of your project is Falling Free, Rescue from the Life I Always Wanted. Talk about the aspect of faith because mm -hmm. it took monumental faith to take, to take the next step. It's yeah. not like God planned it. I mean, he showed you his entire plan. Oh, no. You probably would have run from him at, Absolutely. That, at that point. Talk right. about faith and how he built your faith with every move that you mm -hmm. made. You know, there's a verse in Isaiah that warns against warming ourselves by our own fires. Mm -hmm. And that's very much the way we were living. We didn't know that, we didn't see it that way, um, but we really were able to solve all of our problems for the most part ourselves. And that was just the life that we lived and we loved the Lord and we served the Lord. We grew up in the church, but we had not been backed into the corner of really relying on God. And this forced us into that corner where we were just, you know, the bottom was kind of falling out of our world and nobody around us seemed to understand. And Corey and I had to just, you know, God kind of pulled us tighter and pulled our family tighter and said, I'm calling you to this and you're going to have to trust me. You're going to have to do this a little scared and trust that I'm carrying you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a great, it, it really built our faith and it continues to build our faith because we showed up in a neighborhood that was very different than anything we had ever known. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and God was just with us every step of that way. And how, how long ago did you make that move to the new neighborhood? It was four years ago. Okay, so since mm -hmm. that time, what's it like now that you've been planted there in that community yeah. uh, for these last four years? We adore our neighborhood. We adore our community. You know, our kids switched schools from one of the best school systems in the state to what at the time was considered a failing school. We had, we had all of these things coming at us and, and like I said, we were a little scared. And now we look back, back on our fear and feel a little silly because now this is our place and these are our people. We walk to church in our neighborhood. We walk the kids to school in the neighborhood. We believe in being rooted to our place and we believe that you can't love what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And so our every day, every step of the way, we are trying to get to know our place and, and our people more. And as we do that, we just love them more and we continue to be called into the work that God is already doing around us in the land of the living. Mm -hmm. Shannon, before I let you go, what's the takeaway of falling free? The takeaway is that we can trust God that we are not in control of our lives and it's better that way. Mm -hmm. And we can trust that his plan might surprise us, but it's going to be so much better than what we knew to ask for on our own. Wow, that's some good mm -hmm. stuff. To connect with Shannon, visit ShannonMartinWrites.com or go to Harvest-TV.com for a link to her new project. It's called Falling Free, Rescue from the Life I Always Wanted. Coming up later, your prayer request, but up next, Pastor Lance, Mark Lance continues the discussion on hearing God's voice. We'll be right back. 